All right, on this episode of Bouts Talking Bouts, excited to be talking to an individual coming off of a big victory at BYB 10 Biloxi Brawl that went down at the end of May. The third round finish there, Tony Lopez getting the W over Jordan Mitchell and cementing himself as the BYB heavyweight champion. How are you feeling there, man? How's your day going so far? Well, it's great. You know, just another day, you know, go, go to work, get up early in the morning, go to work, and come back home. So I can't complain. Yeah, what's work for you? What were you getting up to today? Uh, well, uh, my, my work is construction, so, you know, from all aspects of, you know, just home remodeling to business remodeling and stuff like that. But today, I mean, it wasn't too bad. Today, just uh, installing a door and uh, just uh, doing some, uh, what is it called, base work, you know, putting base in the, in the business. Well, that sounds pretty all right there, man, for sure, and everything so good uh coming on the show and getting to chat a little bit but i mean cementing yourself here as the first ever you know byb heavyweight champion and i imagine you know your past collecting belts it's always still cool to you know rack in those championships and get those going so how did that moment feel there when the belt was wrapped around your waist you know i i gotta say um so just like all the other twenty times, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just, after after the first, I think it was the first three. Then it was just like it, I I expected every time I went for a for a belt, hey, it's mine. So that's how I felt that night. You know, I'm just coming to you know, I got to put on a show so I can give my belt. I mean, it was it was still it was cool because you know first BYB heavyweight champion ever. So I mean, that's uh, a milestone there. So I like that part. I liked it a lot. So, uh, except for just that part, I mean, everything else was the same as before, you know, just regular day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, you traveled, like, all over the place. I mean, you captured one of the heavyweight titles in Canada, too. The unified MMA title came out to my neck of the woods there. So, yeah, raking in the gold all over. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's just great for me, you know. I, I said, this, uh, the sport has allowed me that to travel the world and see everything you know and uh i I can't take i can't take nothing away from all that yeah and just this actual fight here i mean getting out there and you know taking on mitchell and everything like that i mean i think you really showed the veteran composure there with jordan mitchell seemingly trying to get in your head there like flipping you off during the ref's instructions and stuff like that you seem like just totally unfazed and then you dropped him real quick there is that just sort of your familiarity with the fight game and everything and the veteran savvy and you're kind of just like oh whatever i'm not gonna let you flipping me the bird get into my head at all yeah well no that when, when i saw him do that to me it was more of uh he's nervous he's got to do stuff to try and you know get, get over him being nervous so he's trying to hide it that's all i saw right there when he did that Yeah, for sure. And I mean, you're just your yeah, composure and confidence heading into it. I mean, you just touched on it a bit earlier there saying like you go into these fights just like expecting to, you know, collect the belts and everything like that. So I guess that's like something you pick up on and your opponents fairly quickly, just like those different tells where maybe they're lacking in the confidence and trying to compensate. Well, more definitely, more definitely. I mean, he showed a lot. I mean... So the first time, I mean, before when the, the, the ring announcer was announcing stuff, you know, I'm looking at him and I'm reading his body language, his eye gestures, his face, everything about him. And when I see a crack, then I know, okay, you know what? He, he's lost. And with him, I mean, he just when he walked in, he stood right in front of me, wiping his feet. I already, I already knew I won right there and there. You know, I said, he's broke. He's coming over trying to get in my head, even though he's trying to get out of his own head. So, and then, you know, him flipping me off and just, it was just, I said, for him, it was just bad, bad night. <laughs> he picked the wrong person to try and, you know, you know, mess with. Yeah, no doubt, man. And, I mean, I thought this was kind of curious, just like the day of this recording, marking, you know, four years since you made that debut as a bare-knuckle boxer. And I feel like just every time you've gone out there, it's just been incredible action, bell to bell. So how has the, you know, bare-knuckle journey been so far up until this juncture, just with today marking four years cumulatively so far? You know, I, I gotta say it's, uh, it's been fun. Because, you know, I, I did MMA, boxing, Muay Thai, I know every, every single sport out there. And it was, it, I always felt, I was missing something. 
and with the uh, bare knuckle, you know, boxing, that 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 fulfilled the the missing link, so to say. You know, because now it's just straight fist. You know, I can see what it feels like to get hit, or even me hit someone. So I made made it more of a a, a real like, what do you feel like if I was you know fighting out on the street? So I, I was like, well, okay, let's see how it goes, and uh, I mean, it goes good. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Yeah, you touched on a lot of the different combat sports you've participated in, and I thought it was cool that you have, like, the bare-knuckle experience, a lot of MMA bouts, to say the least, but then also doing bare-knuckle MMA. Like, is that something you could see yourself doing a little bit more of in the future, too? Like, was that an interesting experience, the bare-knuckle mixed martial arts? Oh, definitely. You know, like, like uh, when I got that, that opportunity to fight bare-knuckle MMA, it was just like all my other fights, you know, as a last-minute call, and, you know, I never turned a fight down and went in there. And, uh, you know, it was a bad fight for me. It was a bad night that night for me. You know, just uh, the leading up to the fight, when we were just on the back, yeah, warm up and all that kind of stuff to, to walk up to, to the fight, the wrong things were being said to me. So, you know, it threw me off my game when I went in there. Uh, it just, like I said, it was destined for me to lose that night. There was nothing I could have done to, to win. So, I mean, it, I, and I don't take nothing away from that, from that at all. You know, I don't, I, there's no excuses. You know, <laughs> he got me good. He capitalized on me not being there that night. So, you know, props to my opponent. I don't know his fucking name, but props to him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I could definitely see that being, like, something you could do more of in the future. And, I mean, by the way, the opponent was named Alex Nicholson, just for the record there, under that game bread fighting championship banner but yeah just like your the nature of your style and everything i mean you obviously you have a ton of finishes via strikes but i mean close to it with the submissions as well so it seems like the bare knuckle style kind of favors that with like the bare knuckle mma just like being able to like get certain like you know ground positions going and just it seems like the you know submission finishes manifest a lot in that so yeah it could be you know cool to see some subsequent bouts there for you in that discipline yeah no i like it i mean you know, and then how you said uh, my uh, knockouts and uh, submissions were pretty equal. I did it on purpose. I maintain them equal. <laughs> if, I, if I get too many knockouts, I'm going to do a few submissions you know, or vice versa. You know, it's because uh, if someone's looking at me, looking me up, and they're trying to figure out, okay, what's he better at, this, that, I'm like, well, I want to keep everything equal. So when they look at it, they say, well, shit, he's equal on everything. He's the same. So, you know, it let, leads for less opportunity for someone to try and capitalize on something about me. And like like with uh, bare knuckle, you know I've gotten the distance every round, you know. And uh, with with uh, Mitchell, I changed that up. You know, I I finished it the round. So I mean, I, I might I might I might start you know doing that more you know second to the round and it's over. But then I you know if if I can make it exciting and you know I make him bleed, I'll drag it out into the fifth and then I'll finish it off in the fifth because I you know. People pay good money to watch people fight, and when I go out there, my whole goal is uh, give you a show. If I give you a show, then you're gonna come back to see me again, and you don't want me. So that, that's my whole goal is I want to give you a show. I want to put some blood out there. I want to make it gory and exciting. So you're like, fuck. Whenever Tony fights, it's awesome. Gotta go. Yeah, I feel like you've definitely established that dynamic for yourself, though. I feel like just, like, what you've been able to do in combat sports in general, but, I mean, specifically in MMA, like, I feel like people who know your body of work kind of, like, see you as, like, this belt collector, very exciting style, etc. So, yeah, I think you definitely have that sort of, like, you know, role in the space and that broader awareness going, for sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Thanks, man. appreciate that. But yeah, I just love like the, you know, focus still on different aspects of growth. It's like very, you know, martial arts ethos, just like continuing to build on different scales, like in the context of seeing that you were taking some gloved boxing bouts. And I saw some like social media comments where you were kind of saying that you were like looking to like, you know, get your hands proper, as it were. So did you find that that really, you know, helped the development of your bare knuckle game, just having that handful of gloved boxing bouts in the last few years? Uh, well, no, nah, I mean, I, I never, like, uh, I never rap or anything like that with, you know, from before, when, I, when I fight in May or boxing, you know, that's the last thing I do, I don't rap, so, I mean, my whole thing was just, you know, MMA and all that other stuff, of course it did 
did it, and you know, it helped me for for Brunel. What didn't help me was the round times, because uh, you know, three minutes is different from five minutes. You know, and and uh, it, it, that that threw me off a lot because I used to I'd use the first round in MMA to warm up five minutes just to warm up, and uh, in boxing I was already two rounds down pretty much. And if, you know, if I'm, if I'm only doing, uh, you know, five rounds and I lose the first two already, I got to make sure I turn it up or, or finish it. But now, I said in my head, you know, I'm, I'm putting the, the time in like, okay, you know what? It goes quicker. I got to be quicker. I got to move fast. I got to start quicker. So, but, you know, I said everything I've done is, has prepared me for what I'm doing now. You know, I, I, cause no matter what, it's just, it's my next step, the next evolution for my career. It's better not go I said it. I'm going to be here a good, good while. Yeah, for sure. So you see a lot of like longevity in the bare knuckle and stuff like that. I mean, it seems like you've been through a lot of like, you know, combat disciplines. Like you had an MMA bout earlier in the years. Like the goal to mostly prioritize the bare knuckle. Or are you still thinking you're going to mix it up a fair bit with the combat disciplines? Oh, no, no. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I mean, bare knuckle's great. I love it. But it's like, I look at, yeah, I'm, I'm already 48, you know. I don't know how much time I got, but uh, I'm going to do as much as I can and as many fights as I can and as many different styles as I can. You know, as long as uh, they don't conflict with uh, Bare Knuckle, because that's my priority right now, Bare Bare Knuckle, BYB. Because, you know, they're paying me well, and they're taking care of me, and i got to make sure, you know, I I, I give them what what they deserve for giving me this opportunity. But, yes, the fights come up, after or, or way before, you know, I'm, I'm definitely, you know, you know, I first, I'll, I'd always, you know, I'm going to check with BYB, see if it's okay. You know, I'm just going to say yes, I and whatever. And, but yeah, you know, I clear it through them. If they, they say, hey, it's good, hey, let's go. Keep doing what I do. Yeah, and some impressive back-to-back wins under, you know, their banner at BYB 9 and 10, respectively, with Josh Burns. And we were talking about the you know, Jordan Mitchell title victory and everything like that. It seems like just the, you know, Trigon kind of lends itself well to your sort of approach to it, just like getting right to it, closing the distance and everything like that. And just, yeah, being able to utilize that. So like, how has the Trigon been as like a combat sort of framework? Like how has that kind of been for your style and just what's your experience over those two fights been? Oh, you know, I love it. I love it because it's, it's tailor made for, for me and for anybody that wants to fight. You know, because of the, the shape and the size, you have nowhere to run. You know, if you try to run, you end up in a corner. And, uh, you know, like you know, regular boxing leagues are big, you know, and you see guys just doing circles, you know, working, working, working the leg out of the cardio. But, uh, yeah, in the trigon, I mean, it, it's, it's set up just to make you fight. You, know, you try and run, hey, you can get up in the corner, and no matter what, you gotta fight your way out of here, or else you're gonna stay in that corner and get work. But no, I love, I love that trigon with the setup, everything about it. And I had just mentioned there that you were on consecutive cards for, you know, BYB. Is there the desire to get on the next card? Do you even have like a mapped out idea of when you would like to get out there and defend the title? I mean, obviously, I want to let you enjoy the title victory, but do you have any idea in your mind of when that, you know, next throwdown would be potentially? Uh, you know what? Um, first, I want to say I really enjoyed the belt. <laughs> 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 that night I got it, I enjoyed it. Yeah. You know, and uh, uh, me, uh, the, I'd fight as, as, as quick as you can find me an opponent, and that, that's the thing. They got to find someone willing to fight me and, and, and with a decent, not record, but a, a decent, Will to fight, you know, a tough guy because, you know, I mean, Bare Knuckle, it, it takes a certain kind of person to get in there. And uh, so far, I mean, Josh Burns, perfect, perfect. Now, I mean, he, he's a tough guy. I hit him with everything, you know, and, and from everywhere, every direction, and he kept coming, and we kept going, and we went the business. You know, that's a tough guy. You know, that's that's what they want. They want to find another Josh Burns, someone who's tough. You know, someone who can, you know, where, you know, go at it and try and you know, make make something happen, but. But yeah, so that's the hardest part with me is finding out someone that's gonna fight me <laughs> because it's always easy for me to fight anyone else because you know, I, hey, I, your opponent dropped out, you want to fight or not? I'm coming. With me, it's like, fuck, you want me to fight Tony? 
uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, people people when they, when they're asked to fight me, it, it changes, and then all of a sudden it becomes, well, how much are you gonna pay me? You know, so we'll see. Like I said, uh, I talked to the matchmaker. First thing out of his mouth is like, we're looking, but we got to lose home. We just gotta find someone. Yeah, for sure. I imagine that's probably just like the style you bring to the table, but also just the wealth of experience you have and everything like that. Yeah, I imagine it would be difficult to find guys to get in there with. I mean, your resume just really reads like a who's who for sure. Like just all the names as I was like going through your like topology and stuff like that. I'm like, oh yeah, okay. If I fought Jeff Munson, fought, you know what I mean? It's just, it just goes on and on and on. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm curious how you, like, I guess, look at your career, though. Like, are there particular fights you look back on with a certain level of fondness? Is it just, like, the broader journey, and that's how you're looking at it? Like, how do you look at that just with someone who has, like, such a, you know, wealth of experience, like, close to, like, 100 MMA bouts? You know what? Mm. Uh, in the beginning, I, I'd be like, well, man, that fight was awesome, this, that, but now it's more of a... They've all kind of blended into one. You know, I have moments where I'd be like, oh, yeah, man, we're knocking this guy out. You know, boom, hit him so hard, he pissed himself. You know, but it was just it was like highlight reels in my head of the fight. So now I'm, I'm looking at it. Let me get some highlight reels with, you know, BYB. That's what's in my head now. Let me try to make some memories for this sport right here, for Bare Knuckle. I can say, oh shit, yeah, you know, I remember this. Oh man, this day here, this time here. You know, one right now, I mean, it's just, yeah, this belt, winning the, the BYB heavyweight title. That's, that's going to that's gonna be a, a landmark in my memory of, of accomplishments. So, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's hard to just uh, say, oh yeah, you know, this fight, this fight, that fight, whatever. So they're all blurred into one <laughs> big bloody mess. <laughs> Yeah, it's been a stellar career, and I get what you're saying for sure. You seem very focused on the bare knuckle and have been for a few years. And when I talk to a lot of bare knuckle fighters, I'm kind of curious, like, what their, I guess, preparation kind of techniques are. Because, like, some guys will do, like, the, you know, punching in the sand. Some guys will have, like, the Muay Thai boards that they'll punch and stuff like that. Is there, like, different, you know, tricks you've adopted, like, just galvanizing your hands and stuff like that? Like, how much does your, I guess, bare knuckle training differ from other disciplines and all that? <laughs> well, my training is uh, basically the same from MMA, Muay Thai, any style of fighting in the bare knuckle, it's all the same, which is get up in the morning, go to work, come back home, cook dinner for my kids, clean the house, feed my dogs, main, you know, do a little maintenance on the house, and go to bed and do it all over again, Monday through Friday. On the weekends, go out with the kids, have a good time. So that's the one thing about me that is totally different from anybody in this world, anybody that does sports and stuff. I don't train. I don't do cardio. I don't do anything other than live my life. And on the weekends, I go have some fun, beat the hell out of someone, and get paid to do that. So that, that's my training. <laughs> that's actually awesome. I mean, see, I feel like you have, like, a pretty well-regarded gas tank, though. So you just naturally have that, like, you know, cardiovascular, you know, kind of dynamic going on there where you can really push the pace for the longer fights there. That that strikes me as curious that you don't really, like, have any, you know, training methodology or anything at all. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just... What it is, I, I guess, uh... Knowledge trumps everything else. You know, it's like, uh... That, that grand master of the old kung fu movies you used to watch that just sits there and watches the teachers, you know, teach the students all that stuff. And, uh, you know, when it just gives all cocky, you like, I can beat that old man up over there standing there. You know, why don't you always just sit there watching us and doing this, this, this? And well, that, that's where I'm at now, you know. It's like, I don't need to do all this foolish nonsense of wasting my time. I did all that in my youth. And now, I, I mean, I've learned everything. I've seen everything. I... Anything and everything that you could possibly think of doing to me, I've already seen it, done it, or thought about it being done. So, I mean, this fight with Mitchell was that exact thing. I went in there, I was just watching his movement, when he was punching at me, the way he was moving, all that stuff, when he was even open, and uh, just 
did it that way. And yeah, you know, I, I, I get winded and I don't know if it's a natural gift of mine to be, you know, have good cardio, but like, you know, when I'm, when I'm going to the ram, um, I'm fine. When the bell stops for me to go in the corner, now I'm breathing heavy. I'm like, oh, God, catch for it, catch for it, catch for it. Well, when it's time, you know, 10 seconds, hey, stand up and let's go. Boop, I get up and I'm back to normal. Like, there's no breathing heavy, no nothing. It's like, okay, let's go do it again. So it's a fresh start for me. So I don't know. I mean, it's, it's I like that about myself, but I think it has to do with me just uh, not wasting that extra energy when I'm, when I'm in there moving around or punching somebody. And it's just, yeah, I guess experience. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny you used that, like, specific comparison of, like, the martial arts master. I'm pretty sure in your last fight on the commentary, Paul, Paul Malinaj, was kind of liken, likening you to, like, Mr. Miyagi or something to that effect when you were in there. I say one more time, Trey? Yeah, I think he was, I think Paul Malinaj during the fight commentary was likening you to Mr. Miyagi. So I thought it was kind of funny that you were, like, relating it to, like, the martial arts master. Like, he too, he, I mean, I talked to him before the fight also, and he was talking like, very favorably about, like, how high your fight IQ was, and he could really tell you were a veteran fighter. Yeah, well, I mean, <laughs> no matter what, you can't be, you know, experience and knowledge. And it's just, you know, I, I've seen just in, in videos, you know, like on YouTube, same same kind of stuff where, where you know, there's a, a grandmaster, 80-plus years old, comes in just to show some moves, and he's lightning. It's like, damn, that old man moves quick. You know, but it's, it's just for that movement. Everything else, calm, relaxed, he's just moving regular, if not even slower. But when he has to execute, he's got it down so perfect that he moves light, that lightning speed. And, you know, so that's, that's a gift, you know, of, of knowledge. And just knowing when to execute and use the energy that you use to make sure everything works properly and connects. So, I think I feel like I'm running that path right now that I've, I've gotten to the point where I, can, I know when I got to use some energy, when I don't have to, when I strike, when I don't, all that kind of stuff. So, I mean, I'm, I'm liking it. Yeah, for sure. And just, I've been wanting to ask you about this for a little while, just because this was a show I used to watch, like, back in the day, that bully beatdown experience you had there, like... Yeah, it's it's such a curious idea for a show. Just like yeah, the different guys coming on talking about their experiences, getting like bullied and stuff like that. And there's always like some meathead there, and then you got to like beat up that guy, uh, that guy Colt there, I believe his name was. Like, how was the entirety of that bully beatdown experience there? Like, hanging out with Mayhem Miller and beating up that dude and stuff like that. You know what? One that show was badass. I love that show. It was funny. And it, I mean, the stories, be, you know, with the bully and the, the, the victim and all that stuff, I mean, fucked up, but at the same time, you know, hilarious. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> my experience there was, was nerve-wracking because, you know, the, the people behind the scenes would tell the, the pro fighters, like, hey, these guys are nobodies. You know, take it easy on them. Don't hurt them. All this, is, all this stuff, right? And uh, I'm watching one guy before mine, you know, like, sorry, like two, three before mine, I'm, I'm watching them as they go in there against a the bully. And two of the guys, and you know, one almost got knocked out, and the other one almost got submitted. And I'm thinking, these bullies aren't supposed to know anything. But yet, they, they for a split second, made the professional fighter look like shit. So when I went in, in my head, I said, I cannot relax. I cannot think this guy knows nothing. To me, he's a full blown fighter, and I got to treat him like that. <laughs> So that that's a, that was the nerve wracking part, not knowing who he was, what he knew, what he didn't know. So yeah, but once I started, I quickly realized he didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> I had fun. <laughs> it was just doing. It wasn't even like when I do the submissions. It wasn't even uh, real. Sub, well, I, I call them not real submissions. It was just shit you do in the playground, you know, when when uh, you're horsing around <laughs> and stuff. So, but it was fun. Yeah, it looked like you had a good time with that whole experience and everything. I thought I liked how you, you know, stood up for the guy and stuff like that. And you were like, oh, hey, if you ever give this guy any trouble, I'm, I'm going to be around. He'll he'll be calling me up. I thought that was cool. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, I felt bad for a little, <laughs> I guess. I mean, he was crying, little kid. I mean, I mean, he, I, not to, to, to 
sound negative, but he deserved to be picked on <laughs> for looking like that. <laughs> and so, but it's, it's just, I mean, you know, you, sometimes you can't help the way you look and your body structure. So I figured, you know what, let me get his number. After we leave the show, anything else happens, just give me a call. <laughs> but yeah, I love that show. Yeah, for sure, man. I mean, the same sentiment for me, and I appreciate you giving me the insights into the behind the scenes of that. Because, yeah, I feel like that would be a weird dynamic. Like, you don't really know who you're getting in there with. And I always figured there was, like, some kind of dynamic, too, where the producers were saying to go easy on the guys just with the liability potential there and all that. But you've been really great with your time, man. I want to be mindful of your schedule there and everything like that. Get back to, you know, hanging out with the fam and doing all that and enjoying this big win so to that point is there anything you might want to like add as a parting thought as we're wrapping up tony you know what one i mean for one i just want to thank my kids you know they're, they're my backbone you know they, they do I, everything for me in the sense of uh for my training purposes <laughs> you know they they constantly i mean when i'm walking by them and stuff they they throw punches at me kicks at me and sort of <laughs> keep me on my toes you know, I got to shot block or move or whatever because a lot of times they hit me. <laughs> and I'm like, what the hell was that? Well, you should be ready at all times. And that's, I mean, like I said, they're making sure just with little gestures like that that I keep on my game. I'm sharp and stuff. And then I'm talking, now, you know, I want to thank the fans, you know, because without them, I wouldn't be here, you know. I, when I go out there, you know, I go out to put on a show for them first. After I put on a show, if I want, I go for the finish. If not, if, if it's going good, I'm, I'll just keep giving them a show until it ends. But yeah, and then uh, my sponsors, I always got to thank my sponsors. All or nothing clothing, always gives me all my, my gear, my shirts, my shorts, you know, it's like, puts on all, all my sponsors on there, you know, they're awesome. OC Fight Doctor, you know, if, if I get hurt or anything like that, I go over there and he fixes me all up. And then uh, Avenger Cycles, you know, I have a motorcycle, you know, that helps me, you know, do, especially with the gas prices now, you know, doing some commuting to pick up certain things. Then he takes care of my bike, of your cycles in San Bernardino. So, you know, and unbreakable, unbreakable mouthpieces. Because uh, that mouth guard I have, hey, I, I'm, I'm giving them credit for me never getting knocked out. Because that mouthpiece that's in my mouth, that hit me, sure, I don't, I don't go down. So, but yeah, and then of course, you yourself here for, for having me on your show, you know, because without you also, People can't hear me or, you know, tune in and hear hear my my life and my stuff and things that go on with me. So thank you very much. Yeah, it was great getting to talk to you, man. I've been watching you fight for quite a while and would definitely like to, you know, set up a talk ahead of the first title defense. But glad we could, you know, get one going after the, you know, historic victory, cementing yourself as the first BYB heavyweight champion so yeah really thanks to you for coming on the show and providing some really great insights tony hopefully you enjoy the rest of your night there man oh i will <laughs> thank you you too you know <laughs> you have a good one